Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian and today we're jumping into the Dragoon for Final Fantasy XIV with my Dragoon controller guide. If this guide gets you interested in playing this job or if nothing else playing on the controller, you can always check out my detailed ultimate controller guide in which I go over everything that you could possibly want to know about the controller itself. This and all links will be in the description below, but I'm not trying to waste your time. Let's dive in. The first thing you should know, especially with these guides, because they can tend to run long, you can always check the playhead on YouTube or the description of the video to jump to any particular section. We're gonna start with the basics, getting you set up with the controller. We're gonna go to my layout and do all of the things, and especially my macros, which is really important for Dragoon. And then finally, just kind of any tips and tricks that I have for mastering this job. Now, to start off, like I said, let's go ahead and jump into the game and let's talk about how you configure your controller. Now, for me personally, you can hit start, you can go into system and then character configuration. And if you're playing on keyboard and mouse, you can easily swap between these two very easily. It's just that flip of a switch. You can still use your keyboard and mouse in any of these modes, making I think Final Fantasy XIV the premier edition. I use legacy type camera based movement so if i kind of switch in here going into control settings if you really want to like when you press back to back up in typical other mmos you might have played that's how you can have that set otherwise if you like to run in the direction of your controller and your control stick play around with legacy type furthermore i'm going to jump into filters this is going to be very important as a dps but anyway any job that you play in this game itself I use enable target cycling, basically when my weapon is sheathed and my weapon is drawn. You can see when I am sheathed, I use a custom in which that I turn off party members, pets and minions, but I'll keep alliance members, non-party PCs, enemies and things like that so I can kind of engage with the world. The reason why I turn off party is because you can actually use the up and down buttons on your D-pad for controller to cycle your party list, making it very easy to be able to target a party member if needed. Now, when I'm engaged with an enemy, I am going to only target enemies that in this case. You can do further advanced filters by actually holding down LB and pressing one of the face buttons. If you're on PlayStation, this works just as well. So you would just cycle in instead of Y, you'd have triangle. So just note there's a little bit of a translation that will occur if you're on a PlayStation controller. And by the way, PS5 controllers are legit awesome. Uh, just note that. Anyway, so you can kind of have additional filters if needed. I'm not going to cover that much. This is more of a personal preference, something that you can play with. Let me go and show you what that looks like in actuality. If you press down on the left stick, you will draw your weapon, as you can see here. So my weapon is now unsheathed. And if I want to sheath it, I can do that. So if I'm just pressing left and right on the D-pad, you can see I'm just going to cycle through some targets. Just pressing A is going to draw me into my closest focus target. It's actually really handy, especially if you're in large crowds around patch time. So note that's a simple, easy thing you can do on a controller. But now if I take out my weapon, note that I will only target and filter through, even if I change my camera, the two different enemies. This is one easy way you can easily jump in and start just actively fighting so even now that i'm engaged you can even do a little bit more here so i am currently just targeting one target but i can also use the left bumper and the right bumper to easily cycle my targets as well so whether i'm holding down the left trigger and the right trigger note that i have full ability here i can also hold down left bumper and cycle through any target on my enemy list so targeting is really critical obviously when it comes to a dps but any job in this game it's important to know that you need to hit the right targets at the right spots now let's go ahead and dive more into my character configuration and this is going to deal with hotbar setup and how you actually configure what you see on screen before we dive into the layout and more. I have turned off display hop on numbers. If you have that turned on, you're going to see numbers randomly floating around on screen, but I'm going to leave that up to you. I also have turned on hide unassigned slots. If I turn that off, you see lots of little gray floating bars, and this can be actually important and kind of detail something out for you real quick. It's just kind of my first real pro tip here. The Dragoon, there's a lot of different rotation guides out there. I'm not going to dive into a specific rotation because as patches happen, whenever you're watching this video, the rotation might, there might be a better one online and I don't want to misinform you. So just go check online. But here's the pro tip when it comes to rotation and I'm going to build a very poor one. I'm sure an ultimate player is going to be like, this is awful, Brian, never do this. You can use the UI. <laughs> 
good Lord, they're going to hate me for putting piercing talon in a rotation. Uh, you can hate me for that, but that's fine. Um, so let me just kind of say here, here's just kind of a four thing, uh, four skill thing. Use your UI as you're learning the job to kind of have these floating hot bars so you can feed yourself information as you're trying to learn. There's nothing worse than trying to have a panic moment and trying to figure out what's the next best play. Now, I would say as a personal tip, it's always best to put out some damage rather than just freeze and do no damage. One of the things that separates a good black mage from black a bad black mage is something that ends up being where you're casting you're casting something rather than standing around just wondering how do you get back in uh into your rotation in a proper way so use the ui to your benefit your benefit and in this case i'm going to turn that off because i hate how that looks with all those gray bars but now you can see i've got a nice little floating ui out here and i'm just going to get rid of that because i don't really need that for dragoon or for this guide but i just want to give you guys kind of that pro tip at getting started and going from there you can set any of these hot bars up. I use hot bar three. We'll cover that here when we get into my HUD layout. Um, and that's essentially where you can also change it up. So if I wanted to change up how hot bar three looks, I have that ability to do so uh, listed right here. Now, if I jump into sharing, note that sharing means that no matter what job or class that you're on, those skills are always going to be prevalent. This is important for something like you can see here on screen where I've got sprint, my mount, uh, a specific mount limit break is really important, especially if you're a dragoon. Be limit breaking out there, dragoons, please. I beg of you. And, uh, you know, so, and then a couple targeting different things like that. So that's going to be no matter what class job I am on in this game. That's important for sharing. Anything that's not checked is going to be job specific. So you change, it's going to be set up for those skills just for that. So you have a lot of flexibility in how that plays out. So this is kind of how I've got it for hot bars uh, one through 10, eight, nine, and 10 are shared. And same thing for the cross hot bar, seven and eight are shared. And this is going to become important when we get to the custom tab here in just a minute. Finally, let's dive in here. Under the cross, you can actually have display crossbar help. This is when you hold down the trigger, it will show the names of the skills themselves. I'm gonna keep that off for myself. I rock, rock. <laughs> uh, I use hold mode in this case because that's gonna give you the expanded cross hop bar, holding down left trigger and right trigger, and right trigger and left trigger. Thus, you can have those expanded ones, but it also gives you the ability to double tap. Now, if you're struggling, if it's something that's a little bit difficult for you to do, uh, you're still kind of learning, you can always jump into toggle and mix mode. You will lose some of the functionality of the expanded and of the, the double tap W cross hop bar, but this can help kind of bridge that gap, especially if you're playing on a different job. Now, also driving in, I say always display W cross hop bar. If I click that off, you can see it disappear completely. And I say return to W cross hop bar after, uh, or the cross hop bar after W cross hop bar input. What this means is if I, you know, pop this on, then I'm automatically right back into my, uh, you know, option here. So uh, that's going to be how that functions itself. So on that note, and diving in a little bit further, let me go ahead and actually cancel this out real quick. I apologize. Let me go ahead and do that so we're not just blasting battle music at the rest of the, the, this guide character configuration cross hop bar and then finally i have you can position this separately if you wish you can see i haven't done much with that so you can play around with that to your heart's content as terms as how you want to have your hud layout Finally, under the custom tab, I have enable expanded controls with right trigger and left trigger. You can see that here. And that's using that cross hop bar to left, which if we go back to sharing, note that that's going to be job specific. And then I use right trigger, left trigger, and that uses cross hop bar seven right. And that means that is shared because that's a part of that sharing tab option right here. That's where my mounts and stuff like that go. Then under the W cross hop bar, I actually have an expanded it to use the directional buttons. You can see a couple options here. If I just put that to four buttons, you can see how that visually changes on the screen and I've got that set to three left and three right. Number one question typically get, how do I assign a skill to this? And unfortunately you cannot drag and drop onto this mirrored or shortcutted window. You actually have to go out to three and you can drag and drop, put it right on. You can see here it pops right up and removing it moves it. If I move these around, you can see here how that plays into uh, assigning on the hotbar three. Back into the customization web weapon is sheathed as well. This is the final section before we get into our skill overview and that discussion. Uh, you have, I have it to where when my weapon is sheathed, I will do hot bar one, seven and eight, which are shared. And then when I, my weapon is drawn, I'm only gonna keep it locked to one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit close and not save that. What this means is if I press R bumper, it's going to cycle through those different hot bars. So you see here, I can have kind of repair. I don't have anything to repair at the moment. I could do an emote, things like that. So anything that you want, to be able to set here, you can do so that way. But if I pull out my weapon, which it is now, note that it is not going to 
cycle until I actually have my weapon put away. So boop, boop, boop. This will prevent me from accidentally jumping into hot bar two, hot bar three, etc. But you can always do that manually by actually holding down the right bumper and then using any of the buttons and face buttons to be able to cycle through your hot bars and use that accordingly. All right, so guys, if you just skipped ahead, welcome back. We've now going to be talking about the skill overview and how I've got my HUD layout. I'm jumping in real quick because it's, it should be just a slight overview. Uh, enemy list is listed here, progress bar. All of this should be personal uh, into what makes the most sense. I use hotbar three here for cooldowns and cooldowns alone. Note, I'm not actively clicking on these. These are just to communicate to me when something is ready and I want to use it. And I use three so that I don't have a, a button or a symbol on the, uh, the icon. So it's a little bit cleaner. And then you can see here, I got my cross hotbar listed here, my dragoon gauge here, parameter bar, and then a bunch of other things that are listed in the game itself. So that's kind of be the quick overview. Again, check out the ultimate controller guide if you guys want more details. All right, we're gonna start with the uh, top hop bar and why I have this, because this is gonna dive into our little macros here, uh, oh you know, and jump, dip, and dive. So just note that we're gonna cover those in detail here in just a minute, but it's important to kind of talk about what they do. So first things first, Dragon Sight, this is important, and this is a, something that you wanna target uh, you know, somebody in your team because that's going to benefit them. But uh, that's kind of why I've actually got that macroed itself. So if I jump into my user macros real quick, you can see I use a ton of macros that occasion. Uh, in this case, I am going to basically automatically select that target to the whoever is nearest to me. You can choose to use this macro, but this isn't essentially probably the most efficient use. You're going to find that uh, this is probably good for the casual and the mid-core player, but I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you want to take this. If you want to put it in reverse order, uh, this is essentially targeting people in your party list. In this case, whoever is my number two, then my number three and number four. Just note that it is really up to you in this case, but that is how I use that macro. But this is to tell me that it's off a of cooldown, which typically I will make sure that I want to keep this up at all times. With the 120 second recast, it is going to have a longer cooldown, so just note that as well. Then I've got my Dragoon Gauge here that it's just kind of filling in this kind of gap between uh, Gear Skogel, Star Diver, High Jump, and Mirage Dive. Finally, Dragonfire Dive and Spine Shatter Dive, which I've got hidden listed here under uh, you know the expanded cross hop bar as well. So just kind of pay attention to that real quick. And the reason is, is that I don't technically actually have access to all of these. You might see these two skills, but these are in fact macros that use all of these skills together. Now, personally speaking, I really struggled with enjoying this job until I made this macro change. I felt that it had too many just off, one-off buttons that were just kind of off to the side. And it really kind of made laying out the controller a little bit challenging for me until I made this change. Again, I'll, let, I'll leave it up to you. Macros can have a negative or slightly uh, DPS loss, but because all of these are off the global cooldown, it doesn't impact me like something that would be a global cooldown ability would if you put that into a macro. So macro warning to everybody out there, but if it doesn't bother you, if it doesn't bother your team, then by all means, use what you want and make it work for you. Let's go talk about those macros because I'm gonna show you guys how I actually have them laid out here real quick. First thing first, jump, div, dip, <laughs> and dive. Uh, you can see here I'm using the macro icon jump and I'm still using jump here. This automatically upgrades to high jump. You do not need to worry about setting anything other than jump in this case because if you get level sync down, this will still work. Jump is followed by Mirage Dive, which is followed by Gear Skogel, which is followed by Star Diver. So there is an opportunity here that you might end up not necessarily getting a skill off in time. I would say it happens incredibly rarely, so you just wanna make sure you're paying attention to all your skills, and that's why I've got them shown off right here. Now, jump is going to be what comes first, which will trigger off Mirage Dive. Because jump has a cooldown, the next time I press the button, I will Mirage Dive. The time after that, I will Gear Skogel, and then finally, I will also Star Diver. Now, these are two skills that, this has a uh, cooldown, this also has a long cooldown, but it requires a certain condition to be met in order for this to be used. So I'm able to take one button and turn it into four things. Now, you'll see here, I also have, oh, you know, and this is where I've kind of played around with a couple options. In the long run, I've ended up moving Gear Skogel onto its own button in case I want to make sure that I don't end up having to do an actual jump or mirage dive when I'm trying to do a Gear Skogel. I originally had this one first, but in playing around with it, there are times in my rotation that I want to make sure that I'm Gear Skogeling. So I'll just leave it up to you and how you want to choose to do it. We'll cover it and why I've done it this way 
here in a little bit more detail, but it has the same principles. But the thing it does do is it does use that macro icon. So that way it has that as a cooldown. So I know it's cooled down a little bit more and whenever it's ready over here as well, because if jump is still on cooldown, using this will still gear Skogel because it's again, it's just gonna kind of fall through or what I call fail through uh, macro writing technology uh, in this case. So guys, again, use these at your own discretion. I found them incredibly helpful into my rotation. To kind of highlight what this looks like, let me go ahead and put myself into the blood of the dragoon and let me go ahead and target my target. Boom. So I use that. Now you can see Mirage Dive is up. So I use Mirage Dive. Now I can actually use this for Gear Skogel and you can see I get one eye and then I can go into my rotation and build up this timing uh, for itself. So here's where it comes into kind of play and where it becomes a lot of fun uh, is because um, as I'm building this up, as I'm doing my rotation, and once that comes up again, I can actually get my second eye and you'll see the full force and effect of the skills itself. So all I got to do is maintain this. Jump is up. Jump is used. Mirage dive. Gear is Skogel. Nestron. It upgrades shadow star diver i don't know why i said shadow it is what it is so you can see how that comes into play and works out real well in terms of my rotation you can see here also nestron is now an upgraded ability and i can keep using it i can keep floating and flying through my rotation here in a very simplest way i'm gonna go ahead and reset and reset and let's go ahead and talk about why i've got that all laid out and how that ends up working in the long run okay so over here on the left hand side i've got arm's length bloodbath blood of the dragon lance charge and life surge you can see here it's almost identically mirrored over here on the right hand side uh the reason is is because whether i'm doing an aoe rotation here on the left hand side or a single target rotation here on the right hand side i want to be able to either double tap and get into uh, lance charge and life surge or double tap over here for a lance charge life surge boost in my attack as well so you can see here uh, life surge is going to increase it's going to absorb some hit it's also going to ensure critical damage for the first weapon skill used while it's active. So this is really great to get that guaranteed crit. Life Surge is going to increase your damage dealt by 15%. So note that these are just great boosts. And then obviously you want to make sure Blood of the Dragon is up. You can see here that's what kind of really start, starts off the rotation and really brings you into some of your powerful skills. Now over here on the left hand side, we already covered Blood and Slide, which is essentially Dragon Sight with an auto target option. Battle Litany is another uh, increase of critical hit rate to the near by parties by 10%. So this is great for you and your party. I want to always be having that up. You can see here I have it listed here and I ended up all having it here because I had an extra space available. Then I have the option to just trick out Garaskogel when necessary. Then I've got Doom Spike, Sonic Thrust, Co Earthen, Torment, and then Oh You Know, which is essentially if I'm over here doing my OE rotation, then I can easily jump in here without having to kind of bounce back and forth left and right sliding. It just ends up being a lot more comfortable for me personally speaking. Then on the right hand side, I've got my single target rotation, true thrust, vorpal thrust, full thrust. We've got disembowel, chaos thrust. So you have kind of one little rotation here, one rotation here. Then I've got my jump, dip, and dive. I've got fang and claw, and I've got wheeling thrust. Now note that because of location and different kind of positional effects, you want to see here the target's flank for fang and claw, and you want to have the target's rear for this ability. Wherever possible in the game, I try to put uh, positionals in a position that kind of feeds me that information. So Fang and Claw, I want to have that either on the left or the right so I know that it's on the target's flank. Anything that is going to be on the, the rear of the target, chances are there's not much for the front of the target, but regardless, then I'll have that on the up and down pathways. So that's why you see Fang and Claw here, and that's why you see Willing Thrust here, is because if you want to take advantage of the positionals and maximize your DPS, there you go. Now, if we jump over into Hotbar 2, where you can see here my expanded cross hotbar, I have my Spine Shatter Dive and Dragon Fire Dive listed here as a part of uh, the cooldown so that as I use them and I know when they're up and ready, so I don't need to think about it too much. Leg Sweep, the reason is, is that I put try to put all my stuns in the same spot so it's muscle memory across all jobs out there. I've got Piercing Talon, same concept, my ranged uh, kind of basic attack for all of my jobs is in the same spot, so that's why I've got that. I've got High Jump on its own own specific thing. So if I was over here and I wanted to just make sure I just could do the jump itself, I have that. I've got second win and true north listed right there. And then I have a vase of jump if I want to get the heck out of dodge. 
Finally, on the on the on the crosshop bar right, you can see here I've got my mount roulette, I've got my Wanderers Tales Sprint, my Regalia. Hopefully, you guys were able to get one of those. Limit Break, and then a couple of targeting macros, which I actually go over into more detail in other guides. So here it is. That's the the, the layout. Those are the macros. That's how I've got my controller set up. It's I know this is a little bit longer guide, uh, and I was hopefully that you guys have enjoyed it in some way. So you can see here easily doing an AOE rotation, get that Blood of the Dragon in. Get this rocket and rolling, Gareth Skogel and more, and then get right back into it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this guide. If you have, be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you feel like I've earned it, if I've earned your sub, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know. And so I can welcome you officially to the Soul Nation. But without further ado, I wish you guys all the best. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being a part of this channel and this experiment. And hopefully you guys are enjoying Final Fantasy XIV as much as I am. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Thanks for being here. I love you. I love your faces. And I'll see you soon. Take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.